Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing another shear moment diagram problem. But in this problem, we are going to be using the relationship between distributed load, shear, and moment. And we're going to learn what I mean by that in a quick second. But let's just read the problem to see what we're dealing with. So, the shaft is supported by a thrust bearing at A and a journal bearing at B. Determine the shear and moment diagram for the shaft. Now, the problem seems uh, fairly straightforward at first but we begin to notice that there are multiple different external forces applied to our span. And we know that this is a problem based on what we did previously in this section method. But why is this a problem? It's a problem because we do not want to make our lives miserable taking three different sections for this shear moment diagram, right? Because what was the rule? Every time there is a new load introduced or removed, we have to create a new section. So there would be one section here, one section here and one section here. So we know that if there's multiple loads, section method will be tedious. So we introduce relationships between the loading and shear and the shear and the moment so that we can simply solve these problems. So let's see what I mean by that, by this helpful table that I've created. Okay, so now that we're looking at the table, uh, it may seem like there's a lot going on and it may seem very confusing at first, but I'm gonna take my time to clearly explain what is going on first. But trust me, this table is going to be super useful to all of you guys as you go forward and trying to understand how to efficiently solve uh, shear moment diagram problems. So where did these derivations come from in the first place? Well, all of these derivations were done uh, using section method. However, instead of using, you know, actual numbers, they were, they were considering variables to derive all of these relationships, right? So this table I made simplifies these relationships into easy to follow notes with an example to demonstrate each of them, okay? So let's start with the relationship between distributed load and shear load. So we have dv over dx is equal to wx. Now, what does this mean? In normal words, this means that the slope of the shear diagram is going to be equal to the distributed load intensity. So let's take a look at the diagram. We have this highlighted red so that it relates to what we're talking about. And we see when we go up here, we have WX. What is WX? WX represents what the distributed load would be. Since there's no distributed load here, WX is going to equal to zero. So W will equal zero. Therefore, DV over DX, which translates to the slope of the shear diagram, will also equal a constant value of zero, okay? Now, looking at this diagram, does it make sense? It does, because we have a reaction here and a reaction here, and everything in between has to be constant because there's no load applied. Similarly, we look at the next relationship we have, the change in shear will equal to the area underneath the loading curve. So let's look at the spot where I chose to explain this rule. We have this uh, triangular shape under the, the shear diagram, and we have this distributed load here of Wx equal to four kilonewtons per meter. Now let's think about this. The area underneath the loading curve, what is that gonna be? That's gonna be four kilonewtons per meter times two meters. And that will give us what? That will give us eight kilonewtons. And we remember what that is, that's simply our Fr, right? And if we consider the difference in shear, we have eight created by this 10 kilonewton jump subtracted eight, which is the area underneath the loading curve, which will bring us back to zero and equilibrium. So this rule makes sense. Similarly, we can look at shear moment and it's a, it's a very similar rule as what we had before, except instead of relating distributed load and shear, we're now relating shear and moment, okay? So let's look next. The derivation of moment is equal to shear or the slope of the moment diagram is equal to shear. Let's look down here. We are first looking at our shear diagram, right? And we have a negative value throughout the entire diagram with a constant value. Now, what was the rule? We said that the value of shear is going to equal to the slope of our diagram. So that means the slope of this moment diagram is also going to be negative and it's also going to be constant. What is a constant slope? That means that the rise over run is going to be a single value that is not changing based on a variable or a distance across your span. So it is a constant value 
and we're going from 0 to negative 8 based on this case. Okay. Now let's look at the next rule. The difference in moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram. Very similar to what we did before, right? Let's look at our uh, shear diagram over here. We have this triangular shape. And we have an 8 kilonewton peak times the 2 meter distance. Multiply by 1 half because it's triangular. That is going to give us 8 kilonewtons per meter. And you can see here that we have negative 8. And since we have a positive 8 here, which is the difference in shear, right? Or the area under the shear diagram, we are actually bringing this back to zero, bringing it to equilibrium, meaning that this rule is also applicable, okay? And that's pretty much the gist of this uh, chart. There's some other notes that I have here, which we kind of have covered previously. We have external forces in the y direction will cause a jump. And you can see here with our reactions, they cause one negative downwards jump here and one positive jump here. And then in our problem, we're going to look at an external moment applied to the problem. And lastly, we have the third point, which is simply highlighting what we talked about in this first column. It simply states that if you have a polynomial degree for your loading uh, on your beam, it will indicate the degree of the shear and moment diagram. So if you had Wx to an nth degree, Vx would be n plus 1 and Mx would be n plus 2. So let's look at what we have a distributed load, which is right here we have a constant value, meaning that the degree here would be zero, right? Going down, we have the linear function, meaning that the degree would be one. And then we have the quadratic graph for this moment section, meaning that the degree would be two. Now, if we still do not understand what I just spoke about in this table, do not worry, we're gonna use a problem to explain everything once again uh, so let's hop to that problem and see what we're doing. All right, so let's start solving this problem. The first thing I want to do is just solve for this fr here. Uh, and that's simply done by using what we've learned before. We take the peak of that distributed load and we multiply it by the span it covers. And that's going to give us 450 newtons. Moving on, we get our reactions. We'll start by taking the summation of moment at a equal to zero so that we can get that reaction at B. So solving this, we're going to have a negative 450, since it creates that clockwise motion, at 0 0.75, which is half of 1.5 meters. We also have the 600 Newton force applied at 1.5 meters away from A, plus the 300 Newton per meter moment. And lastly, the BY acting counterclockwise, which is in total 3 meters away. Solving for by, we are left with 312.5 newtons. And then we can go ahead and get that ay right after by using semi show forces at y. Okay. So we have ay minus the fr, 450, minus the 600 as well, plus what we just solved for, that by, 312.5. And we get ay equal to 737.5 newtons. All right, so now all of our numbers are added. Let's go ahead and proceed with the problem. So let's start with section one. The first thing I want to do is look at our first rule, which is that the slope of the shear diagram is going to equal to the distributed load intensity. So let's look at this first section. Remember that we have Wx, which is equal to that 300 Newton force, which is coming downwards, meaning that it's negative, and it is constant, right? It's constant because that 300 Newton per meter force is the same all the way throughout the span. Therefore, this means that this should also relate to the slope of our shear diagram. So dV over dx will also equal a negative and constant value. So that means our slope should be a constant number, right? So let's look at section one and see what the difference in shear is now with our second rule. So we have the difference of shear was equal to wx dx in the integral of that, meaning that it's the area underneath this distributed load. So let's take a look at what the formula would actually look like if we if we did it uh, the way it's intended mathematically. So we have the integral of negative 300 between 0 and 1.5, which is our span. And that's going to equal to negative 300x between those limits 
And solving for that, you're simply left with negative 450, right? That's going to be newtons. Or it's simply, like we said earlier, area under the distributed load, right? So what is this difference going to do now? Well, we have this reaction we solved for earlier, so we can already plot a point right about here for that load. Let's just write down 737.5. Then we need to take the difference. So the difference is going to play a role when we take this calculation. So we want shear at 1.5 meters. So we need to take the calculation of V when X is equal to 1.5, which means that we need to take V when X equals to zero plus the difference of section one. And what is that going to equal? That's equal to 737.5 plus what we calculated, which is negative 400. And that gives us 287.5. Now let's draw what that looks like on the diagram. All right, now that's filled in, we have that 287.5, but we also need to consider this external force, which is going to create a jump in our diagram. That's in the important notes section of uh, that sheet I just gave you guys. So we know that if we take the calculation here, we're gonna have 287.5, subtracting that 600 Newton force externally applied, and that's gonna give us 312.5 Newtons. And we could plot that point just around right there. Now let's move on to section two. We have a very similar rule that we're following. We're once again applying this equation. However, we don't have a distributed load here, right? So Wx is equal to zero. What does that mean? That means that this section and this section will both have the same rules applied where we have Wx is equal to zero, meaning that the slope of the shear diagram is also going to equal zero. If the slope is equal to zero, that means that this is going to be a straight line all the way across, keeping that negative 312 all the way throughout. And then you have this reaction that is going to bring it back to zero, keeping the member in equilibrium, right? So that is it for the shear diagram. And now after this, we can move on to the second part of the problem, which is simply solving for the moment diagram. And we're going to use the shear diagram to help us a lot. All right, so moving on to the next part of the problem, we have our moment diagram, and we're gonna follow a very similar process as what we did before, except now we're moving down to that next line where it's the relationship between shear and moment. So that first rule we have for that row is that the slope of the moment diagram is equal to shear. So what is our shear here? Our shear is a positive value and it is decreasing right it's coming from a larger value to a lower value meaning that it's decreasing and this means that the slope of our moment diagram is going to follow the same principle of positive and decreasing we also remember our rules where we have a first degree function here so we, we can expect a quadratic function that is positive and decreasing as it gets to its apex right why do I say that's an apex? It's because we have a crossover here from positive to negative. And if the slope of our moment diagram is equal to zero, what does that mean? That means our shear value must be zero. So let's get into solving for the first section. We have the difference of moment equals to the integration of shear, meaning that we need to take the function and integrate it. We don't have a function for the shear diagram, but we can take the area underneath the shear diagram for the change of moment, right? We already talked about that. So what is that gonna equal? We have to do a long calculation of splitting up this graph into its triangular and rectangular sections in order to get that area. So what do we have first? Let's do the triangle first. 735, which is the peak of that triangle, subtracting the lowest point, which is going to be 287.5. And then we also have to consider the span it covers. 
which is 1.5 meters. And then we also have to consider that rectangular section. So we're going to be adding 287.5 newtons times 1.5 meters once again. Solving for that, you are left with a difference in moment of 768.75 newtons per meter. And we can drop a point right around here and mark this up on the diagram. All right, so now moving on to section two and three, we're going to have to once again consider the shear equal to the derivation of moment. So what does that mean for us? If we're looking over here, we have a negative constant value for shear, meaning that the moment or the derivation of the moment is going to equal a similar condition of negative and constant. So what does that mean? A constant slope means it's going to be a linear line that is most likely coming downwards. So let's do section two first. We already know that it's a similar rule that we followed before, except this time we are considering negative values, right? So what's the difference in moment for this section? We have a negative 312.5, which is what we saw for before right here. And we have the span of 0 0.75 meters. Solving that, you will be left with a value of 234.38 newtons per meter. Now, once again, similar to what we did up top here, we are now going to take the difference between this point and the point we're trying to solve for by adding this difference to our previous value, right? So we have 768.75 minus 234.38, which is going to equal the number 534.4 newtons per meter. Now let's add a straight line to this drawing and show where that is. Now that's all filled in, but we're not done there because we also have this external moment applied. And we know that's gonna create a jump in our moment diagram what direction is it going to jump? It's going to jump in the negative direction because this is applied counterclockwise, okay? So we're going to have simply 534.4 subtracting that external moment, which is going to give us 234.4 newtons per meter. We can also plot that point just over here. Now, similar to what we've done in section two, for section three, we have the same type of graph for section three as we did section two. So we know that the difference in moment is going to be the same value that we saw for before, meaning that we can simply take 234.4 and add that difference to this section as well, which is gonna give us a number approximately equal to zero due to a couple rounding uh, differences that I've made. And pretty much in summary, this brings us back to equilibrium and moment as well. So we can finish off this problem by highlighting this section of our graph, indicating that it's also positive here. And that is the problem. I know it took a long time to explain, but there's a lot of concepts here that are kind of new, uh, especially when looking at section method compared to this. But in the long run, this video is going to be super helpful for solving moment and shear diagrams in the future. Okay, So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one, and I hope it helped.